Hi guys, if you'd like to break into tech and you're trying to build your coding portfolio but you don't know where to start, you're going to love this video because today I'm going to show you how you can build a simple programming project that is impressive using basic Python so that you can showcase it in your next coding interview. Today we're going to use machine learning, namely an unsupervised learning algorithm called k-means. We are going to build our own personality system. What do I mean by personality system? Have you heard of MBTI or Enneagram? They are some of the existing personality systems. MBTI divides people into 16 personality types, Enneagram divides people into 9 personality types, but why not 10, 11, 12? I like to pick my own number. So today we're going to divide humanity into 10 personality types. Let's get started. Okay, so what is going to happen step by step? One, we are going to download 1 million responses to 50 personality questions from Big Five personality tests from Kaggle. Two, we are going to feed this data into our machine learning algorithm. And then three, we are going to plot our results to see what personality types are in our data. First, we're going to go to Kaggle and download our data set. Find the link below. Next, we are going to open Jupyter Notebooks. They are free to install, so if you don't have them, please install them. Okay, let's open Jupyter Notebooks. Okay, so what we've done right now is we've imported Pandas library and we used it to read in our data to a data frame DF. Now let's see what the data looks like. What kind of columns do we have? Okay, so columns 1 to 50 represent the test questions, like outlined in Codebooks TXT. Questions 1 to 10 are trying to establish whether a person is an extrovert, 11 to 20 whether they are neurotic, worry a lot, 21 to 30 whether they are agreeable, kind people, 31 to 40 whether they are conscientious. Uh, 41 to 50, whether they are open to new experiences. The remaining 10 columns contain metadata, such as width and height of the user's screen when they were taking the test. Yes, such data gets recorded. I know, let's pretend we didn't know and carry on with our lives. Okay, so we've got our data. We know that we only want the first 50 columns. We don't care about the spooky metadata. And fortunately, in this case, we don't have to do much pre-processing because the data is in a very good shape. Okay, so let's dive into our machine learning magic. Okay, so now the algorithm is running. It's going to take about two minutes. So in the meantime, let me explain what we've done. Okay, one, I said I only want the first 50 columns and saved it to X. Then I said option display max columns so that we can see entire data frame. Um, otherwise it'd be chopped off at one point and we wouldn't be able to see all the columns. You can check if you want. 
Um, then I filled in any missing values with zeros. Okay, and finally, I ran the mini batch k-means algorithm from sklearn library. Let me explain the parameters. Number of clusters. This is the number of our personality types, 10. But this is an arbitrary number. If you fancy 12, if you fancy 6, feel free to change it to any value you'd like. Batch size 100. This is the size of our batches. What is a batch? So a batch is the amount of data that is going to be trained at once. So we've got 1 million rows in our data, right? But, but we are not going to feed all the data at once to k-means. We are going to feed it in batches. So since, since we have 1 million rows and we set our batch size to 100, we are going to have 10,000 batches in our data. And once our algorithm goes through the 10,000 batches, that's one iteration. The next parameter is max iteration, and we set it to 100. So we are going to go through all the batches, like the entire 1 million rows, 100 times. And obviously, we are fitting this algorithm on our data X. All right, let's see the results. So we have assigned our 10 resulting clusters into 10 variables and we've inspected the result for cluster 1. As we can see, it will contain answers to all the 50 personality questions. This is the picture of personality type 1. That's how a typical representative of personality type 1 would answer all the questions. Okay, but this is not very insightful yet. Let's make it more insightful. We know what personality traits these questions relate to, like extroversion, agreeableness, so we can calculate the overall personality trait scores for each type. So let's calculate those scores for our personality type 1. Don't retype it yet. Voila, that looks much better. Now we can much better see what the personality type 1 is all about. So what have we done? For each personality trait, we added or subtracted the relevant answers, calculating overall score. But why adding or subtracting? Okay, le let's take the first question. It says, I am the life of the party. If someone agrees with that, we are probably going to add to the extroversion score, right? But then the second question is, I don't talk a lot. If someone agrees with that, we're going to subtract from the extroversion score. All right. Okay, so we know the scores for type one, but we don't really want to repeat that for the remaining nine times, do we? So let's do it in one go. Watch how.
beautiful. We've got our personality types. But there's one more problem. The magnitude of those scores are not relative to each other. In order to gain any real insight, and so that we can be able to compare those types, we need to normalize our data. We can do it with a simple equation. Let's do it. We've made it! Ready to discover our 10 personality types? Let's plot them and see! Amazing. You know what's even cooler? If you do this test now yourself and record your answers to those 50 questions yourself, we would be able to use machine learning again to assign you to one of those types. How cool is that? We should give our system a name. If you have any suggestions, please let me know in comments. Also, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. You'll get notified when I upload the next video and I've got a few more projects coming up for you. I'll see you in the next video.